Um, this is from a question we have. It's what is Form's process for arriving at a ballistic solution in the field, Kestrel or hard data? Mm, yes. The answer is yes. So, um, first off, all the ballistic programs that are decent uh, arrive at the same solution. Okay, so if I take a G1 or G7 ballistics or a BC and I put it in JBM, shooter, you could say Hornady, Ford off. There's some interesting things there. Kestrel, um, any of the common ballistic engines. It gives me the same answer if I put in the same data. Um, I mean, there might be a, a, a hundredth of a mil or, I mean, I guess at the very worst, it could be a tenth of a mil difference at long range. But in the terminal range of, of hunting, say 1,200 yards, they, they all give the same answer. So that doesn't really come into effect, right? Um whether it's a point mass solver or whatever the solver is, they give the same answer slash they give good data. Um, they're usable. Now you can use CDMs from applied ballistics. You can use, so custom drag model. You can use the Ford off uh, with Hornady and their actual bullets, etc. It doesn't really matter. They all can be used. Don't get lost in the axle around that. Um, so for me, I prioritize ease of use, clean, um, let's say man machine interface kind of thing, like user interface. I guess it's user interface. Uh, that needs to be clean, concise, and quick. I also have a complete backup system. So if I lose uh, electronics, I still have a way to shoot. So um, kind of let's go through like Kestrels. So Kestrels are common. You need a weather meter. So you need a wind meter. Um, you need a way... Well, I guess you could start it this way, is you need a way to to measure or come up with a correct enough environmental condition that you're in, a way to measure or come up with an answer for a uh, wind call, wind speed, and you need a way to give you the answer for elevation corrections and potentially wind and see what your impact velocity will be. Um. And then I would, for me, I put on the end of that, I need a way to have a pretty solid understanding of what my first round hit rate will be on this condition on this target and second round hit rate. Okay, so for weather data, um, the most common thing is a Kestrel. Um, and they work fine. They work great. They work great as a as a weather data station or station meter, and they, they work great as a wind meter. Um. I do not like them as a ballistic solution because they're slow and the user interface sucks. And I commonly get told, well, I don't need them super fast to go through the the table or whatever it is. And yet I keep seeing people that miss opportunities or they shoot, the animal runs, the animal moves a significant diff distance and they're trying to scroll through their Kestrel to get the data. So I don't use them as a ballistic engine except as a backup. It's a weather meter and a wind meter for me. So my primary is a Kestrel um, that has density altitude. So I use density altitude instead of barometric pressure and all that. And the reason why is for the next piece, but I use density altitude and, and wind speed. Um, the nice thing about a Kestrel is you can spin it and reset it. So you don't have to let it like acclimatize to ambient conditions. If it goes from a warm tent to outside or, you know, warm hot truck to out in the weather or whatever. Um, the bad thing about a Kestrel is the battery life is a little bit short. Um, and in really cold weather, they tend to die pretty quick. So quite a few of them that I use or most of them that I use, I end up having to carry like three sets of batteries, two in my jacket at all times against my skin. So they stay warm one in the device and then just switch them out pretty consistently through the day. And that's even using lithium. So that's the con. Brunton made one called an ADC Pro um, that I actually preferred. It was it did density altitude, um, wind speed, temperature, all the things we need, plus it had an alarm clock on it. And it lasted for over a year on a single battery, and you didn't turn it off. It just ran constantly. So I really liked that. The problem with it was it, had to, it took a few minutes to acclimatize to ambient. You couldn't just spin it and and get it to reset and they've 
they had some quality control issues or whatever. They weren't super durable. Some worked for a while and some broke, you know, started malfunctioning within a couple of months of use. So my electronic method is a Kestrel for density, altitude, and wind speed. Then I have a backup paper density altitude chart. And all I need for that to get a no kidding usable, when I say usable, I mean sub one tenth of a mil le- or less error in my data is my actual elevation. You can look at a map and guess at it and get close enough and the actual temperature. Um, then you, you use that chart and you go up the line of like actual temperature to your actual elevation, hit the line, move to the left and it tells you your density altitude. So there's my non-electronic backup means. And so I just check DA like once a day in the morning or in the afternoon, unless something significant happens. Um, so I got electronic, got a backup. The next is the weather, the wind speed. So I got the electronic is the Kestrel. The backup is I'm just constantly using the Kestrel to calibrate what a two, four, six, eight, ten 10 mile an hour, whatever wind is that I, I see, feel and hear. So that's just the training thing on my end. Um, ballistic solution. So for ballistics, um, again, the Kestrel is not what I use because it's slow and it's a really silly interface they have. Uh, I use prime. I mean, I use them all. I primarily use shooter by Kennedy because what I see with people when we, you know, we use all these different apps, this is the cleanest. And the one that if people don't touch it for six months, they still remember how to build a profile, how to make it work. And at, at least on an iPhone, it's really clean to get the information and the table, you know, that your drop, table built into it the way you want. You can use density altitude, etc. So I do that. And then what I do is I check my density altitude for the average that I'm going to be going to an area or when I'm hunting. Um, and unless something changes drastically, you don't have to change it day to day, just check it. But I build the table and then I screenshot it. And then I make that screenshot of the table. I scroll in and out until the size is what I want, usually from like 400 ish yards to 900. I make that my lock screen on my phone. So just click the any button on the phone that the table comes up. You can give it to somebody else to call your data, whatever. So that's what we all do. We build our table and shooter app or the app. We screenshot it. We make it our lock screen. So if you're working with somebody else or you're hunting with a buddy, you have each other's data really easily. You don't have to go into the phone and do anything weird. So that's the primary means of electronic ballistic data is I actually don't put in the inputs right then. Let me back that up. That's the primary means for an app. Uh, But I don't put in the data like the shot right then because I've been updating it, you know, every day or if the weather really changes twice a day. Um, If it's past like 800, 900 yards, yep, I'll put it in the app and actually pull the exact density altitude and all that. But using those two things, the density altitude chart and the app, um, you're within a tenth of a mil everywhere I've been in this country by just, this is the elevation I should be at within a 500 to a thousand feet, thousand feet works. And within like five to 10 degrees on the temperature, you're within a tenth of a mil at 800. Um, so that's the primary like app. My primary method for getting my data is ballistic range finding binoculars. Other than the range finder, you know, uh, laser range finder itself and scopes that work. Probably the laser range finding bino has been the greatest thing to increasing kill rate or or being able to kill something on demand at speed. So my primary is ballistic range finding binos. They have their own issues with, with ambient and acclimatizing and all that. Then it's the hard data, the phone, the Kestrel, etc. On the other side, on the non-hard data, the backup. So I have my density altitude chart. I use mills, so using like quick drop or or quick gun, you know, average gun, good gun, bad gun, or knowing the exact correction factor for mills, probably, I would say probably when it's sub 600 yards, doing it in my head accounts for the vast majority, at least 75% of shots, maybe more, and that's for me and anybody I hunt with. So a quick version of that is, like an average gun, like a 6.5 Creedmoor in average conditions, 
zero it at 100, it's one mil at 300, two mils at 400, three mils at 500, four mils at 600, or very close to that. So it's basically the first number of the range, minus two, so if it's 500, it's three mils, and then the the second number of your yardage becomes your decibel. So if it's 532, you just go to, you round it to 530 down, and it's 3.2 mils elevation. And then there's a correction factor. A good gun is le- has 0.5 less than that, and a bad gun is add 0.5. That maybe we'll do one just on that. But that accounts for the vast majority of shots under 600 is just off the top of my head because it's sub tenth of a mil error, and I don't have to look at any phone. So as I said, I'm I'm prioritizing. It's got to be correct, but I prioritize speed and durability of this. And part of that comes not using a bunch of brain power and getting into a device and punching this all in any kind of thing. If you do that under stress, you're more prone to error. And I don't want that. So quick drop based on density altitude in the chart uh, or quick math, um, ballistic range finding binos, Kestrel for the electronic wind meter and weather station for atmospheric for density altitude. Then I have a backup chart of density altitude and I think we're we just came out with them but I carry a chart you know depending on the gun it'll be at every 2,000 foot density altitude so 2,000 4,000 6,000 8 10 or it'll be in 2,500 2,500 5,000 7,500 10 or whatever and it's just like you know a little card that's got your data on it that goes you know 100 yard increments to 400 or 500 then it's 50 yards after that and so if I look at my density altitude chart, everything goes wrong, all the electronics die. Pull out density altitude chart. It tells me it's 6,900 feet density altitude. I've got a density altitude chart for 6,000, and i got a density altitude chart for 8,000. I pull the 6,000 density altitude chart. That's now my drop data for that gun. Um, then the... Range without the electronic means. This is not why you use a mill reticle. That's not the primary use of it. However, every once in a while, having a mill reticle and being able to do um, quick range, right? So I basically have brackets for 18 and 36 inches on the gun of telling me what it is, right? So I can look at my reticle and go, oh, an elk from back to chest is between four and three, you know, three and four mils big. Okay, dial one, one, one mil of elevation center because he's between 200 and 300 yards. Um, so it, that's kind of is. It isn't a super long range thing, but it can definitely, the last last instance we needed it, we, by eye, we thought the elk were at the same range we had just killed another one, which was 400 and something. Snow blew in. They moved a little bit. It looked like they were at the same range. I quick ranged it with the, quick milled it with the reticle, bracketed it, and knew that it was between 250 and 300. And the guy killed the elk quick. And we would have shot really high or over that elk had we just guessed. Because the snow, the blowing snow, we couldn't get our rangefinder to work. So, Kestrel for a weather meter. Density, altitude, wind speed. That's what I use it for. Bino, laser range finding binos for primary data. Uh, Shooter app on the phone or whatever app you like. Screenshotted for the current conditions as the lock screen. And then I have a backup density altitude chart and a density altitude like dope cards for the gun that stay with the gun. You can put them on the binos too, but it stays with the gun. That's how I do it. It's based on, you know, getting good, correct data, um, but then reliability and durability. And I want some, without making it ridiculous, I want backups to the data so if something goes wrong, snow, fail, I drop my binos, the Kestrel breaks, the batteries die, whatever, I am still able to come up with an acceptable solution for shots. Okay, I think that answered the question. If not, let me know.